Okay. So, how'd the week so, go? Um, well, I've been trying to be aware of, um, like, the things that I'm telling myself self in my head about, um, like, you know, I'm stupid or I'm a failure now because mm -hmm. of this or that, and I'm questioning it, so, um, let's see. Have you been able to recognize that whenever you feel that way, where it's coming from? Yeah. Like and what so belief you're holding yourself to? Every time happens, I think all the, the negative thoughts that I used to think, and then I'm trying to, like, stick up for myself and say, well, that's not true, and lots of people, you know, this happens to lots of people, and it's okay, you know. So I'm kind of just in the middle. Of, so now I have all those thoughts and other thoughts, and it's just, like, exhausting <laughs> <laughs> well I I would I hear you man and it sounds like you're recognizing the negative thought but you're arguing against it yeah that's exhausting yeah so I want you to think about what that means if you have to like argue against it that means you yeah. believe it's true okay if you didn't believe it was true would you even spend the time negotiating no, I guess not. Mm -mm. So that's a step. You're you're going in the right direction, but this exhaustion. Yeah. It's kind of like okay, well now that you've tried this, so instead of just believing it and having that horrible depression and darkness, now you're just exhausted, <laughs> right? Yeah. So would you say that's a yeah. step in the right direction at least? Yeah. Which is worse? You know, which one's worse, the exhaustion or the darkness? Exhaustion. Really? You'd rather go into darkness and depression? No. So really think about the question then. Which one's worse? Believing it, feeling horrible about yourself, and going into darkness and depression? Or at least questioning it and being exhausted? Which one would you rather? Yeah, the questioning it. Right. So I'm not saying that's where we should settle. Yeah. Right? So now you just need to learn this. You need to learn. There's a learning curve, right? Trial and yeah. error. So here we are questioning it and arguing against it like a lawyer would, right? Yeah. So there's one side that says, she's bad. And then the other side says, okay, hold on. No, she's not. And let me tell you why. Yeah. So the next step would be if you when you figure this out is okay whatever right okay whatever <laughs> every time you're accused is bad if you have to defend yourself you're a slave to the accuse to the yes. accusation right yes because you have to respond every time no I'm not I promise I'm not well what yeah. if okay so what if some concept says, you're bad, and you're like, okay. <laughs> How would that change things? Then I wouldn't have to go through the whole argument at all. No, you can see that there's relativity in that shame and judgment, right? It's all relative. One of the ways that I saw this was it with <clears throat> religious uh, criticism. When you see someone picketing out in public, you're going to fire you're going to burn burn to death in hell. God hates you. You're a horrible person, right? That's a criticism or judgment, right? Yeah. Could you imagine if every single person who witnessed that took it serious? How much uh, depression, suicide, horror would exist on the planet? Yeah. If that perspective of that one person picketing and telling everybody around them they're a horrible person, if they believed it, Right. You see what I'm saying? So what happens when someone goes, okay, and that person's got some problems? Yeah, then they're, they're not believing it. Mm -mm. Not doesn't a, it their... Yeah, it doesn't go inside them. It doesn't. They don't go inside themselves and go, oh my God, what do I need to fix about myself? That's so terrible. You know. You just separate it and see that the that person that's picketing, is it true to them? Yeah. They believe it, right? It is so true. Those people out there have no idea. I'm doing them a favor. Right. 
it's really you could say well we're all gonna burn in hell it's it's true it's true relative to that person's perspective isn't it yes but if you don't believe it is it true for you no mm -mm. so hopefully what this is doing for you is getting you to see okay well if i believe it then you got to go and and you got to uh, argue with that person and defend yourself Okay, so how do you get a dogma to be non? Well, we have to know, not not real for you. Well, let's start questioning it because you've clearly internalized that belief system, right? So when someone internalizes something, it's a concept. It's a just an outside concept to start, and if you internalize it, it becomes your concept. I believe that it's me that thinks that. You're not realizing that it's the concept that thinks that because once you've internalized it it becomes your concept so I believe that does that make sense that's yeah. basically the definition of internalization or programming so once you believe that the information is one uh, true two relevant that means it's important um, and it's coming from an authority that knows better than you, then you'd blindly just internalize it as it's a fact. It's fact. Right? So how so the question you're asking is, Robin, how do I get this fact that I believe out? Because until then, until then, until you get it out, what's how are you going to feel about yourself? Horrible. Horrible. So where is the horror coming from? You? Is it you? Is the badness of you? Is that where the shame is coming from? Or is it coming from the judgment that is coming from the concept? Just From the concept. Yeah, that would be your knowledge. So when you feel bad about yourself, where is it? Where does it seem to come from? From me? Yeah, like you're bad. So it comes from me as a bad person. I'm a bad person. And that's the source of my badness. Not the belief. It's me as bad. So that's the consequence of this type of stuff is you never really think the belief is terrible. You think you are terrible. So when you feel bad, it's, it, it seems as if it's coming from your badness. I'm bad. So therefore, my badness makes me feel bad. Yeah. How do you come to badness, though? How do you come to that conclusion? From believing that the... The dogma is real. We, right, there's a standard. Correct. Yeah, the yes. dogma is real. And it requires there is an, an ideal standard that you don't match up to. So the difference or the space between the ideal and your reality, that space between the two is where the badness exists. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you if you don't if you're not conscious about this, where does the badness seem to come from? myself the truth of you yeah so that's where you're struggling and so because you don't want to feel bad anymore right now you're questioning the badness but you're do but you're you know arguing yeah I have proof I'm not a bad person but in the end if you argue with the criticism aren't you giving it power aren't you yeah. giving that criticism like well we have to counteract it I'm not bad here I'm good here I may be ugly and fat, but I'm nice and kind. Like that, you see how you have to compensate. What you're saying is it's true. People who are obese are horrible people. It's true. Right? So, your question was, how do we remove the badness that you feel about yourself? What, what do you think the answer is with all of that said? To not believe the standards to begin with. You got it. You qu first, you got to question them, right? First, you got to question them. Well, well, I take that back. First, you got to uh, recognize them. You got that down. You got that box checked, right? You feel a lot yeah. more confident. Like I'm recognizing that this is not coming from me, but there is still a sense of badness attached to me, right? You got yeah. that. 
that's huge in and of itself. So many people live in total badness, really never even being aware of anything outside of the me that sucks, right? They just think I literally suck without question. So you got questioning it down and awareness down. So now what you've got to do is stop, um, what's the word, defending yourself. So how do we do that? Well, you've got to be okay with badness because that's what the shame is coming from. It's like saying you are bad. So we got to not argue with that. It's like saying that guy proselytizing thinks I'm bad. Relative to his thought, it's true. I am bad. I'm not willing to do what he says will make God love me. So in relation to that, it's true. I'm bad. Why am I not affected by that? Because I don't care. So we got to get you to not care about the badness. Okay. Right? It's not trying to remove the badness. It's getting to where you're okay with badness. Because that's really ultimately why it still impacts you. Because you're not okay with it. So what if in relation to those standards, okay, you are actually defined as bad? Oh, well, well, that's that the goal. Well. <laughs> that's the goal. What you said. That's the goal. Oh, well, we have to get you to ask the question about yourself. Like, if it's true that in relation to those standards, you are bad. Are you really bad? No. So that goes down to the heart. Don't you agree? So based on these ideals, I don't match up. And those ideals say that I'm a bad person because of it. Right? You following me? Yeah. Well, what do you think about yourself? What's the, um, what's the truth just, truth of it, you it, on the inside? That, that I'm a good person. Well, and how do you come to that? I, I just know it. It's your, you, don't you agree? You're kind of using your integrity, your willingness, yeah. your effort, just the fact that you don't mean harm. I mean, there's an inner sense, like you said, I just know it. Yeah. At the core of you, are you really bad? No. Okay, so let's compare that to these ideals and concepts. They're conceptual ideas of what a good person is. And there's a, and you are failing at them all. Yeah. Right? There's an outside concept that's based on your truth says you're a bad person. Now compare that to the inner sense of yourself. Yeah, it just sounds like dumb. Like it, what are you doing? It doesn't it, it it is dumb, but because you are wanting outside validation, it feels real. Okay. So what has to flip here? There's a flip that has to switch that goes from outside validation to inside validation. Okay. You've got to flip that switch. If we take the flip and say she's defined by outside perspective, her view, her value is defined by people's concepts of what's right and wrong. The concepts of right and wrong. Bam. That's flipped up. Okay. If that's flipped up, how do you feel? Say it again. I want you to visualize like this is like um, an up and down like light switch. Okay. Okay. When it's flipped up, your perspective, your um, or let's go flip down. When it's flipped down, your pers your value is based on everybody else's perspective of you. Okay. And you could be pers and it's really like think of how many different views of what's right and wrong exist. Yeah. Right? Holy crap, you're yeah. screwed. Because you suck yeah. at everything. So do I. <laughs> That's the truth. That pe person picketing, they think you're horrible. You are now horrible. Because they have these ideas and you clearly suck. Make sense? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be so radical as someone like that. It can be something like going to church and people's perspective of you in, in, the, in the church. You're not good enough. You don't do volunteer enough. Your kids aren't behaving properly. Think of all the suck 
that you are in that position, yeah. right? So if your uh, definition of worth is based on uh, um, um, it's based on assimilating to concepts of worth. How do you feel about yourself? Bad. You got it. If we take that switch and we switch it up, meaning you're going to turn the light on, and it's defined by your inner sense of integrity, okay, what happens to how you feel about yourself? Then I'm good and fine. How do you feel about yourself? I feel good about myself. Right. Okay. You're basically good. Because you know your integrity is good. Like, okay, so imagine you've got that flip, light flipped up. The switch is up. Okay. And someone outside of you says, oh, my God, you're not, a, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're a bad person. <laughs> okay. You're a bad person. You're not thin enough. You're not smart enough. You suck as a person. So you can now compare that when you've got your that flip switched on, you can compare that to your inner sense of integrity, right? Yeah. Instead of just you know, if the flip is switched down, which is my worth is based on external validation and my ability to accommodate to these concepts or to become these concepts, right? You're comparing yourself to the concept, yeah. the, you're, to the ideal concept. It's between my, me and the ideal concept. And you're using the concept to compare yourself inside to. So that's where it's like there's the concept and then I don't match it, therefore I'm bad. Yeah, and I just attach to everything I ever heard about anything. So Totally. So if you remove that and let's, again, put it up where it's internally based value. Yeah. Okay. So your integrity, this inner sense of goodness you feel inside that you've known since you were a child is good, right? Yeah. You compare that outside concept to the inner integrity. Where is, so the inner sense of you is, it is what it is. And then the outer sense of, or the external concept says you're bad. How do you feel about that? It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Cause you're, cause it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It seems like superficial. Yeah. It's like, there's no depth to it. Am I confusing you? No, I think this is great. This is yeah, let you know, me see if I can... <laughs> well, uh, right, it makes me question, like, well, not many people are aware of this. Except for all the scientists talking about internalization. <laughs> yeah. And that's a lot of programming and uh, the psychology of brainwashing. And so if this knowledge was made aware, how much brainwashing out there would be exposed as brainwashing? Right? If you, if this knowledge was taught to you, what's the likelihood you're going to be manipulated by programming? Not very likely. Not very likely, exactly. And guess how much money people would lose? Because this is a huge aspect of how capitalism has worked, unfortunately. Right, but then they wouldn't believe that if they had more money, they'd be better. So. That's the truth. It would just completely everything. So to some degree, it's like really important for this current system we're living in to function is to create an illusion that you're worthless. And to, in order to prove it, you have to work your ass off and you have to do all these things to then feel better about yourself. Yeah. Right. So many people think, too, well, what would you do without those goals? Are you inherently lazy? Do you need um, a goal of running away from you you sucking for you to work? No. Right? I mean, that's what's 
crazy to me. It's like saying, so you're telling me without this programming that I'm inherently going to go kill someone because I like it? Do I need to be threatened to not steal? No, and someone that needs to be threatened is going to steal because of whatever reason they have, because they're living in poverty. I would steal too if I was in poverty. Anyway, so it's like, think of it in two ways. So, in one way, there's the real integrity of you that you're aware of and that you believe is honorable. So, you have to also honor that for this to work. You have to decide, well, that's how I want to identify my worth right there. My value as a person. I'm a good person. And it's not, I can't use a program to identify that. It's just, it is. I don't, I, I can't use edges and rules to define that you're, you feel inside. You're a good person. It's the truth of your nature, right? So you have to value that yourself. If you don't value that, how are you going to feel better about yourself in a world that says you have to accommodate to these concepts to be valued? You can't. You, no, because no one else really knows that sense inside you, right? Like, does your mother know that sense? Nope. No. She only knows hers. Yeah. Right? So you're the only one experiencing. When I say, how do you feel about yourself from the inside? You're the only one that experiences an awareness that it's really good. It's not bad. You're not a bad egg. You're not rotten. You know that. So when it comes to all these feelings of badness that you've been experiencing, that you're trying to say, to argue against, how do we, how do you get rid of the exhaustion now? What's the next step? Well, I mean, I'm hoping to not even have those thoughts come through my head. Well, well let's... They do, I'm just saying that well compare the inner sense of you yeah you know you have to be able to say no matter what society says i have to do to be valued if you already feel valuable inside are you going to compare yourself to those ideals? Because don't you agree they're ideals? They're not necessarily averages. Yeah. So you're not even being compared to the norm. You're being compared to the, like, exceptional standards. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're right. Oh, man. I just want, I'm hoping this sticks for you. Yeah, me too. So let's just say you're at home and your house is filthy. Okay. Okay. So how do you feel about yourself? So typically, don't you agree? Typically what would happen is you'd go, this is horrible, I'm overwhelmed, I have to fix this, I have to clean it up, I feel terrible, I suck, oh my god. <laughs> um, I don't think I would think, think that badly of myself for it, unless somebody was coming over that minute or something, but I would feel like overwhelmed and I had to clean it up as soon as possible. Okay, so let's use an example where you typically would feel bad about yourself. So, okay. you give me an example, because I'm over here just throwing stuff out. Okay, well, here's one. <laughs> From this morning, um, I lost my driver's license and credit card briefly, and, you know, normally I would think, what an idiot, you know, how hard is it to keep it in your wallet, and, you know, somebody else could be using it right now, and just spiral, spiraling down, and all the negative thoughts, and then I had all the thoughts, well, you know, people lose stuff all the time, I'm not really an idiot, like, it's fine. 
If this is the truth, is it worth being ashamed about it? Well, don't you agree? Take your inner sense of integrity here. No, that yeah, that's what I was saying. Like yeah, people lose things, and I, it's not. I'm not any. I'm not more stupid now that I lost it than before. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, I wish to not have those thoughts to begin with. Like, oh, I lost them. Let's look for them. If I can't find them, we just get replacements. It's not a big deal. You know, just kind of mm -hmm. skip the whole negative. Well, don't you agree? If if you're holding out that negative feeling, I want you to go into that space. Go into that space of what it would take for someone to actually criticize another person as a complete idiot for misplacing their you know, wallet, driver's license, credit card. <laughs> yeah. What would it take for someone to actually be that inhumane towards something so human? It would take for them to believe that everybody has to be perfect and can never lose anything. Well, don't you agree that requires they hold themselves to those perfection standards? Yes. And what would it take for them to avoid being an idiot? Think of all of the details they would have to maintain. Yeah. Just, right? Go into that. What would that be like to live in that type of space? That's horrible. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> oh, they're obsessive. Right? They'd have to be so on top of every single minutia detail and make it perfect. Then, what would it take for them to then care about what other people are doing? And micromanage other people as well. Yeah. Just go into that space, what that would require. Do you really want perfection from that level of superiority? Do you really want the superiority? No. Me neither. I would rather be a real human being and be free to just be real than to be hijacked by perfectionism. Ultimately, if that person makes a mistake, how do they feel about themselves? Horrible, I would assume. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. So because you hold yourself to that type of standard, how do you feel when you, what's the first feeling you get when you lose your credit card and your driver's license? I'm stupid. Pretty much. Um, You're an idiot. <laughs> yep. So there's a, um, there is an aspect of but, your... But I'm thinking, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm just thinking from another person's point of view that doesn't exist, that is the way that you're talking about, um, that they're going to think that. You know, they would think that, so I'm going to think that too. Well, this is what has happened. You've internalized this as a self-concept, as if that's ideal. Like you wor you're worshiping that, like that's relevant and those people are good people and they know what they're doing. So you've like elevated that concept as if it's superior and you should be that way too. So you're trying to emulate that and then holding yourself to it, right? Yeah. So that's why you hold yourself to it. You actually believe the person that we were describing is such a superior human being and we should want to be like that person. But when you go into what that feels like, how did that feel when we talked about well, that type of person? What type of mindset do they have to be in to be that way? Yeah. Miserable. You don't, you don't want to be like that at all. Yeah, but you do. At some point in your life, you decided that person is the person we should all aspire to be. Yeah. And because of that, guess how you get to feel about yourself? Like that. So this is where... Well, it's because you don't want their judgment, but when you go into it... But you're the one doing the judging. Does that make sense? It's like they're not judging you. You are because you're emulating right. that concept as if it's a, it's a... Like that concept is the concept I want. Therefore, the inner sense of me is inadequate, inferior, not good enough. Make sense? Yeah. And then, so what I'm saying is, hold on, but there's the inner sense of you that's real. Right? The one that you're like, oh, I know I'm a good person. Yes, 
That's reality. Which one would you rather? The fictitious supremacy concept of perfectness that has this illusion of superiority or would you rather have the inferior you that is integrous? The inferior me. Yeah, so you tell me if you're in inadequate and inferior, is that something you should feel bad about? No. Mm -mm. And it's weird because I've kind of lived my life in a big life then, you know? Yes, you have. You're aspiring to be something that actually is, would you agree, the source of why you feel so horrible about yourself? Yeah. So knowing that, would you ever praise that? No. Me neither. I would never sustain a program or a, that says your truth sucks. You have to perform beyond that for people to like you or for you to like you. You cannot be yourself. You have to be some superior concept. So if it's a superior concept, don't you agree that that's superior to your truth? Yeah. There's, yeah. So what's the likelihood you're ever going to reach it? It's zero. Right. Zero. Because it's superior to the truth. The truth yeah. is this. Here's me as the unique self that I am. This is my unique qualities or this is the essence I feel inside. And you said, that's not good enough. I want yeah. the illusion out there. That's great. That's superior. So because you want that and have decided that's what you are and want to be, it leaves you to continuously feel like shit about your truth. Yeah. Pretty like my simple. truth is fine and good to be good with. Well, you need to recognize that the actual fantasy of being better than this is the source of the badness. Yeah. It's not the truth of you. So this takes us back to the beginning. The truth of you is only feels bad if you make the superior concept feel good. You want the superior concept. So therefore, you're stuck with all this negative, self-deprecating thought processes that you now have to work hard to remove. Would it be hard to remove if you just recognize that you do not want the superior concept? You don't want it anymore because it's come with a lot of torture, a lot of suffering. And continuously feeling horrible about just being human. So that's where the shift needs to occur. You really need to actually say, I, even if I could be given the opportunity to be that perfect person, I don't even want it. Yeah. Why? Because you can't sustain that and you're not better just because you did something perfectly. Yeah, and your whole life is now hijacked to maintain that standard. Yeah. So you don't get to be real. And then any any reality that, you know, conflicts now becomes catastrophic. So you could end up catastrophizing losing your driver's license. Yeah. It's a catastrophe. Now, that's hilarious yeah. when you think about it. I know. But that's what you that's what you've set out to be. It's like, well, of course you're going to feel like it's a catastrophe if your whole life is meant to be perfectionistically, idealistically like some fantasy persona. You never question that. You've always just thought I suck. Right? So the badness that you feel, where is it coming from? Is it coming from the reality of you or is it coming from you holding yourself to a better concept of what you are? Yeah, holding myself to the concept. The concept is where the badness comes from. If you could remove that concept of perfection, how would you feel about yourself? Good. Just right. fine. Well, okay. So what's the answer right now to this conundrum? To not believe any of these standards that are out everywhere. To reject them. Yeah. Just say, I don't even want it. But you, you'll be liked and everybody will think you're cool and you'll feel better about yourself. I don't want it. So it's a matter of rejecting it. Because don't you agree This there's an illusion in there that says 
you will feel better about yourself. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a trap. It is a all trap. Of, all of it is a trap for everybody. <laughs> right. So you chase your tail, and because <laughs> when you start chasing that thing, you feel worse about yourself. You wouldn't feel bad about yourself if you didn't glamorize these ideals that really are fake. They're lies. They're not truthful. You've abandoned the truth of yourself for a lie of something you think is better than it. Yeah. Would you even feel bad about yourself if you didn't have believe the lie of something better exists? No. Mm -mm. And even if you do believe something better exists, what's the truth? <laughs> You're inadequate to it. That's the truth. Right? Yeah. So you might as well, if you want to feel better about yourself, you can either continue to be a slave to trying to create the facade of the idea, or you can surrender to reality and live with where you're at in peace and calm. That sounds great. <laughs> it is great. It is great. And it comes so easy when you surrender the illusion of betterment. You reject it. Just straight out reject it. I don't want it. I don't want that idea anymore. You, When you set out to perform, you probably thought it was going to make your life better. Yeah. And did it. Has it. <laughs> no. Right? It just perpetually has left you with these feelings of horribleness about yourself. Is that something you would want to promote? No. So by holding yourself to it, to it, aren't you promoting it? Yeah. As if that's ideal. It's so much better. And I'm a horrible person. So, yeah, you need to start questioning it that way.